I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello there and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some of your time watching our program. And I'm really pleased today to introduce to you Dallin Barnes and a wonderful story. So we'll get right into it. Dallin, where were you born? Born in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. And uh, good active parents, were they? Um, yeah, great parents. Um, uh, yeah, active. Brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. did uh, you have? One brother and one sister. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And kind of a normal Mormon life at the beginning, was yeah. it? Yeah, I'd, I'd say it was pretty normal. Yeah. So nothing too out of the ordinary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you went yeah. to... Primary and Sunday school and I sure did. church regularly, I guess. Yep, and baptized when I was eight. Yeah. So, anything about life as a, you went to seminary, I guess, and as a young man. Yeah, I went to sem seminary. I uh, graduated from seminary. Did you? So, mm -hmm. And do the deacon, teacher, and priest thing? And <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I did it all. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any questions that came up as your in your youth? I, I mean, I I felt so naive, I guess, at those ages. But did you ever, anything ever, come up during those years? Or? Um, I I did have some questions, you know, the existence of, uh, you know, the existence of God. So I mean, that was did something you? that did come up wow. um, in my youth. Um, and then I, as I, you know, got older, uh, you know, I actually started kind of. Uh, I wasn't, I guess. Uh, a strong believer, and um, but I still went through the actions. I kind of went th through church, and mm -hmm. uh, or went to church, and then uh, went to seminary, and then I had a strong push from you know family members after after that to kind of go on a mission. And I'd say you know right around that uh, that time of uh, high school and seminary is really when I, I guess I would say that I gained a testimony oh, okay. of the existence of you know of God and. Um, Did you read the, the Book of Mormon? And I well, I, as I was younger, my mom read it to me. But mm. when I got older, uh, it took me my senior year. It was the first time I ever read the Book of Mormon all the way through. Okay. So. You feel like you had a testimony of the church and yeah, Joseph I, Smith and exactly when I as um, soon as I uh, well as soon as I, I finished the Book of Mormon and I was asking you know should I go on a mission? That's yeah. one of the things as I was praying to go on a mission. That's when I, I would say that I gained a testimony of the okay. Book of Mormon and of Joseph Smith, and um, and I really felt strongly that I that's what I needed to do to uh, because I, I did have a love for God at that time, yeah. and I, I needed to serve Him. Felt and that's you what I was wanted to, to do. share that story with other people. So you end up yeah. going on a mission. Where'd you go? I served in Ecuador, Quito. Oh, mm -hmm. was that a good experience? Um, it was uh, the first year. You know, I was. Um, I was like a little kid, uh, just walking there, just saying hola to everybody, uh, just uh, <laughs> learning your Spanish. <laughs> yeah, learning the Spanish, and really, um, it was a lot of fun at the very beginning. And then, uh, you know, towards I would say half of my mission is when I started having some some questions. Uh, really? Yeah. Ab about the church? Well, I just uh, about the church and about um, you know bearing false witness. Uh, you know, I they were taught to you know give a strong testimony sure. and. Um, say that I know that this is true and at that point uh, you know about a year in my mission after you know at that point in time I was in leadership and I was his own leader um, I really struggled with um, saying something that Being I didn't truly know that. yeah something that I didn't absolutely know for a fact I I had my you know and there's some doubts because there's some stuff that I was reading yeah. out there that was you know published by the church and was it? 
and so it was uh, difficult uh, for me, but I, I got over that. Do you feel like other missionaries go through that same doubt, or mm -hmm. how do I know that I know this? <laughs> Absolutely. Kind of I had uh, uh, one of my companions, uh, another zone leader, um, he was having a problem with the, the Book of Isaiah and the Book of Mormon. Uh, he didn't understand why it was uh, you know, found in the Book of Mormon, copied word for word in there, and so that was really troubling for him. You know, I was aware of that, but boy, I just dismissed it, I guess. And mm -hmm. what I didn't know then was that, that Isaiah and those other things that are copied in there have the problems and errors of the 1700 or 1800 Bible that was mm -hmm. Joseph Smith had access <laughs> yeah. to. Yep. You know, that's kind of an interesting little problem. But so you, you stuck out the mission, I guess. And Yeah, yeah. Uh, at that point in time, I, you know, I, I got over that hurdle um, and I... I was able to get around that by not saying, you know, firmly that I know uh, more that I kind of believed. And did you ever share this with your mission president? I, I didn't. I was, uh, I was scared. Yeah. Um, you know, you're scared of at that time yeah. of leadership a little bit. Because don't we sometimes hear that the counsel that would be given to a missionary like that, or anyone in the church probably is, will just say it anyway, and eventually mm -hmm. you'll come to know that it's true, or. Tr rely on my testimony that the church is true. Have you heard any of those comments? Uh, yeah, I've heard that. And I've, I've, I've never wanted to be that type of a person, though. I, I wanted to be there for me and for my thoughts yeah. and beliefs. And um, well, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> so you got home, and then what happens in so life? So th that's when um, you know I, I really gained a passion uh, for study on my mission. So that's one blessing, I guess, that came out of that. Yeah. Um, and. When I got home, I just diligently wanted to know uh, more, and I, I call it the rabbit hole because I dug deeper and deeper into the, you know, the gospel of uh, the, the Mormon culture, and um, you know, reading some of the stuff that they had put out, and it, uh, the the more I read, um, I think the more, uh, I guess, questions I had and concerns, yeah. and um, you know, especially some of the uh, stuff I, you know, I learned on the mission, you know, some of the topics that were very difficult for me, and you know, one was uh, polygamy, so. That was a, a you know difficult topic, and every time people would you know I would ask them about that, they would always kind of shrug it off and just say, "Oh, it's because there, you know there wasn't as many, uh, yeah, <laughs> as many men, wasn't or as something. many, yeah, uh, uh, men. Or there's too many women, and just things like that." that Were you of, aware at this point that Joseph Smith had been had practiced polygamy? And no. No, yeah. I just, it was uh, only taught, you know, we knew that Brigham Young, Brigham yeah, Young and, and some everybody of those guys. that had moved out west. Yeah. Yeah. And now the essays have come out, the church is admitting mm -hmm. that Joseph Smith practiced polygamy, even married mm -hmm. women that were already married. You didn't know any of that. Oh, no. I, that's stuff that nobody would talk about. Yeah. That's something that. I think to... that is one of the hazards the church faces is people mm -hmm. studying. Yeah. <laughs> you know, becoming yeah. aware of both the history and the doctrine. and. You actually get read a couple of books, too, that were kind of eye-openers for you, too. Was it during this time? Yeah, I mean, one of the, uh, you know, after the mission, um, you know, I, you're always told in the church not to read anything else but except for church books. Yeah. And so what I did is I went out there and bought church books. One of them was Rough Stone Rolling. Um, uh, I think it was Lyman Bushman. So uh, I wanted to read that, uh, and so I opened that up, and uh, the more and more I, I read, um, you know, into that book and find out the character of Joseph Smith, yeah. Um, I just had started getting more and more questions, and you know, and people, they maybe in the church they call them doubts, but I mean, uh, this book was, I mean, one of the best books I think was written. Uh, yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. And a but, good member of the church who's writing it, exactly, being honest, Ex exactly. Yeah. And so I just I continued to read that, and um, you know, find out his character, and uh, you know, some things really disturbed me uh, as Were I was reading that. Same questions that came up uh, on your on your mission, or maybe not the same ones, but certainly. Some some questions were coming yeah, up. Yeah, right? some questions were coming up, um, you know, and I was that, that book did, a, a, I think, a fairly good job at kind of um, explaining some of those things. And yeah. um, and it's supposed to be a source that we can trust, right? Uh, oh, yes. I mean, because it's, it's a church, uh, I guess, it's, I, I shouldn't say it's an endorsed church book, but it's a, a member of the church that wrote yeah. it that's a, a strong member. And um, I mean, that was just one of the books. And then, uh, you know, at that point in time, um, you know, I, I started living with my dad again. And I think that uh, he, you know, he was telling me things, and that's still at that point I was still fighting. You know, I was still fighting uh, to the, defend the, Joseph Smith. The church Smith. really and, has to be true. Yeah, yeah the yeah, church really has to be true, and he Joseph would. Smith was and a I remember prophet. one time he bluntly said that he's like Joseph Smith isn't a prophet, and I got so mad. I was just like, oh man, like because I, I felt like he was, you know, um, 
that I don't know. I just felt like he, he was just fighting me with it. And, but anyways, um, you know, so I, I defended it. Uh, and eventually, uh, he just said, well, just read this book. And it was, I think by Charles Larson, um, the, oh. upon your, uh, upon, upon the, uh, by his own hand upon the papyra but, or something yeah. like that. And, you know, I read that one and, uh, that one just became so clear to me that there's no way that the, uh, I mean, there's just no way. I mean, I could at that point, I, it really became clear that uh, you know a lot of this stuff was lies, um, and that he fabricated yeah. the the you know the Pearl Great Price, the Book of Abraham. Did you even know the church had the papyrus? Uh, I did not. Um, I you know you heard I mean, it was some in rumors. 1967, mm -hmm. and you'd think that if the church had been able to prove <laughs> yeah. that it was really accurate, that mm -hmm. that would have been a, a a foundational thing for for Joseph Smith and everything. I had never heard of it. Yeah, I didn't know it. I mean, I, I one in the book, you know, he even says, "Thank God for the you know the Book of Abraham." And I, I also agree because for me, that was uh, really the cherry on top because it point. it just I I couldn't deny it. I, I just yeah. it was so plain, right smack dab in my face that yeah. uh, you know it's fabricated because now we have the Rosetta Stone and. You know, they're able and to the translate Egyptian. And the facsimiles, I mean, exactly. Joseph Smith translated mm -hmm. that, and we have the facsimiles both in the papyrus and mm -hmm. on in each pearl of great price. Yep, and, mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, even on that topic, um, you know, what I did after I read that book is, you know, like any Mormon would probably do is he try, wants to defend it, right? He wants, sure. to, he wants to protect what he believes in his church Absolutely. and his prophet and everything. So, I, you know, I went on to, I think, uh, LDS.org, and I was reading some of the... Um, you know, Mormon apologists and uh, hearing what they had to say about that book, yeah. uh, or not about the book, but about the book of Abraham and the things that I was reading was so upsetting to me because I could tell it was just blatant lies and they were trying to It's kind of a up stretching, yep. that's oh, why I felt like they were trying to stretch the mm -hmm. truth and, and hope you'll believe it or something. Exactly, and that it was kind of upsetting and, I, and then at that point I realized, um, you know, what the church, uh, that was a kind of a clear uh, thing yeah. for me to how the church covers things up and how they yeah. you know get uh, certain people to to try to cover things up and that's why they don't want us looking that's exactly. why the church leaders don't want people looking I'm gonna go really off subject a little bit here and let me ask you what was your relationship with Jesus at this point so I, I've always um, like I said uh, well I shouldn't say always but uh, in my younger years I, I did have a, a curiosity I, I, I did want to know about God yeah. um, you know and at times I struggled uh, with my faith in God, and then about the time I graduated seminary, was on my mission. I had a firm belief that God existed. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and, and where was Jesus in this? When you say God existed, was Jesus? Jesus wasn't God for you, was he? Um, no. Yeah, Jesus. Uh, he was a God. He was one of the yeah. part of the you know the Trinity, not and he the was God, but not just the God. a God. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, and I, but I still, you know, I had a passion for. Um, doing what's best and for yeah. doing what I knew best for, for God. Uh, but in yeah. learning this, what I call the bad news of, of our journey, you know, <laughs> yeah. learning about the book of Abraham and polygamy and, mm -hmm. and all those issues, masonry in the temple, all those negative issues, mm -hmm. I didn't know that I was missing out on the good news. <laughs> yeah. do, do you see that? Were you that way too? Or did you Absolutely. sense? There's, you? there's something that, you know, uh, you can't explain, but, uh, and I think a lot of members right now, they can't explain maybe some unhappiness or something that's uh, bound them. And I, that's the best way I can describe it. But, yeah. you know, I, I felt like, um, you know, my best was never good enough in, in the church. And I just always, it was just difficult uh, for me. Uh, I was trying to be a good member, but for some reason I just, you know, I felt bound. Yeah. Um, and so the, 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 soon as I, you know, started studying this and started, you know, first it was difficult because yeah. I think for everybody it's painful because you realize that you've been lied to. Yeah. And then, well, like you see, the first thing is the reaction of I've yeah. got to defend this. I've got to learn what yeah. I'm learning about can't be right yeah. or something's wrong here. Yep. And yeah. And after that, it comes, you know, and I, I admit that there's some anger. Like I was upset and I wanted to just charge at people and just pretty much tell them, hey, you know, just shout it off at the rooftop about the uh, the lies that I found out that has been um, been told to us our whole yeah. entire lives. And I, you know, I told a couple people, and I found out that didn't work too well. They're pretty much yeah. just uh, kind of shut me up and said, "No, I don't want to hear about this." Well, and you so, lost the spirit, and the devil's got you, and all kinds of stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. And so, um, you know, after you get through that uh, that anger, um, you know, and sadly, some of my friends that have found this out, you know, they become 
uh, atheists and stop believing in I Christ know it. and God. That's the worst thing. Yep. It's really one of the reasons we do the show. Yeah. Is because uh, we want to give hope to people that that once they find mm -hmm. out the bad news, but there is a good news and stuff that we we really are joyful about. So <laughs> yeah. So where did you come into that transition? Where did you come into learning about the biblical Jesus, I guess. So, so I, uh, with help of my, I mean, this is where my dad comes in, you know, he started just teaching me things and, um, yeah. you know, I, I, I still, I read the scriptures at the time. I, you know, I, I, I've always been passionate about studying the, yeah. the, the Old Testament, the New Testament. And, mm. um, and so just, you know, studying more about Christ and I'm still learning, you know, yeah. there's still a lot that I, I, I have to learn, but, you know, I, um, I trust in my Savior and, um, you know, and I believe in Him and uh, now I feel it's uh, now that I understand, you know, the the gospel a lot clearer. There's a peace that comes, you know, and I shouldn't say just peace, but there's a a freeness that, um, you know, you don't have to jump through all these hoops just to have a relationship with God and 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 you know uh, wear garments or do all these different things that are just, you know, uh, to try to please God. Exactly. Well, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Mm -hmm. You felt that coming off. Absolutely. Yeah. Even yep. though you're trying to live and probably d did a good job living the gospel <laughs> yeah. and everything. It's, it is a freedom, isn't there? There's a burden that's off your shoulders. And is it because we just, we now as Christians turn that over to, to Jesus and what he did on the cross for us? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think that that has um, made a tremendous difference. And not only that, but I feel like, you know, that true faith, it's like once you, you know, you truly have that faith, you're going to, you're going to act and do, um, you're going to want to do that instead of, you know, uh, I guess kind of being told you got to do this, you got to do that, and it's like I, I just I felt it was just much easier to live the gospel yeah. um, after you know I found out the the truth. Yeah. So, so does the now that you read the Bible and certainly did as a missionary, but does the words do you have a different filter when you're reading? Oh, absolutely. The Bible now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, what yeah. Paul says and mm -hmm. what Jesus actually said and what they didn't say, I think that was what I found interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I find it, uh, I mean, I, I really enjoy it uh, and uh, I'm learning a lot more. Like I, I can see like it's fun learning, you know, the actual gospel and how it fits together and you don't have to, um, I guess, create bridges and create these like weird, uh, I guess, uh, what do you call it, uh, man-made doctrines. Yeah. You know, you're trying to, it's, it's just... It all fits together, and it's now more smooth to read. Yeah. So, well, I was so surprised in in my transition when we started learning about all the different things that Mormonism does, mm -hmm. and then realized that they're not even in the Book of Mormon. You know, the three <laughs> degrees of glory and yeah. eternal families and all that stuff. But then I read the letter, red letter Bible, you know, and and read the words of Jesus, and then started reading Paul, and it was just fascinating that. Uh, I guess you've felt the same thing or learned. <laughs> yes, and I, I and it's it's great, and I'm still learning. It's uh, yeah. it's yeah, it's great to hear the words of Christ, and just so relieving. Um, you know, grace is something that's it's real, and uh, you know, it's something that it's so hush hush in the the, the Mormon Church. It's uh, grace, and <laughs> why don't we understand that in Mormonism? Why don't Mormons understand that? Um, because then that takes away you know some of their control. I would say that's my guess is because they yeah, want maybe you know, some of that control of. Um, hey, you have to do this, you have to do that. You have to pay your tithing, you have to yeah. go to the temple, you have to be married for time and all eternity and all that. Mm -hmm. And we just don't understand that concept. You were just saying that, that grace is a kind of a, not a taboo subject, but not understood, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's not understood in the, you know, and I, I uh, so the, the viewers know a kind of interesting thing about me, uh, my my wife, she loves the society of church, and I think a lot of members do. They want to be, yeah. um, you know, they they. It's hard to get out because of all their neighbors and all their friends and family. They're all LDS. And so she's still going to church. Yes. And you're going with her some, yep, from going, time to time. Yep. Or, and it's it's hard for me. I now there's a lot of people <laughs> yeah. that might be in this category. So what yeah. do you say to those? Give give us some ideas, your thoughts at least on making that because we do need to show love and patience and. Yeah, I mean, as far as the the people are concerned, the Mormon people are great. I mean, we I'm sure you can say the same thing. We love them. Yeah. Um, they're they're our brothers and sisters. And um, but uh, I, I would say that as far as uh, knowing um, Christ and uh, there's I think 
they would say that they know Christ very well. But uh, <laughs> I know that's so disturbing because I thought I did too. Mm -hmm. But now, as a Christian, I can honestly say I didn't know him. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any respect for him. He wasn't awesome. Yeah. He was just kind of at the end of the prayer. Exactly. You know, it's a footnote. What's the funniest thing is in the temple. It's like he's a little errand boy. <laughs> yeah. it's, you know, it's just so, so shocking. Yep. Now. So anyway, go ahead. With. But, uh, you know, I'd, you asked me earlier maybe some advice or... Um, yeah. You know, it's it's difficult for me because I I sit there and sometimes I'm really pained by what I hear in sacrament meeting and in testimony meetings and it just it just it really it's hard and but you know my wife this, the difficult part is uh you know I'm trying to help her because she's uh, we're not on the same page where she's still learning yeah. and so is she being patient with you and you being patient with her exactly oh good and so that's you know kind of the transition that we're going through and. Um, you know, and I'm showing, I'm trying to show her, you know, love and patience and, yeah. uh, you know, going to the ward and, um, it's, uh, but it's a, it's tough. It really is because, um, it's, uh, I mean, even with that, there's a real, a, a little bit of a roller coaster of emotions because yeah. you know, like I, I, I know what I know yeah. and yet I'm still, you know, uh, I'm still going, and yeah. it, it's it's difficult. It's a <laughs> well, that it, that was happening to me yeah. too when I'd listen, sit in fast and testimony meeting, and mm -hmm. somebody says, "I know that the kind of like we were talking about before. I, I know the church is true. I know that President mm -hmm. Monson is a prophet. I know this. I know that, and we just don't really know yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I I can almost go on the other end now um, because the big picture is clear to me. And I could say that I know that you know Joseph Smith wasn't a prophet. I, I can see like there's so much evidence, uh, yeah. and you know that might offend some people that if they they hear this. But guess what? I mean, they gotta do their due diligence. I mean, God yeah. gave us a brain, and He He wants us. I mean, to diligently we're here on earth, and uh, He wants us to to learn, study, and do the grow. members in your mm -hmm. ward know where you're at? Uh, the, the new members don't. I, my last bishop, I I. Uh, shared with him. I shared with him. I told him, I'm like, hey, can I still come even though I don't believe in this? And uh, he was a seminary teacher, and he was really curious with me because he's like, man, this kid's different, you know? <laughs> so, you know, and I just told him uh, my thoughts. And he wanted to meet with me every week because I just told him blatantly that there's no way that this could be true. And so we're meeting every week, and he's trying to say, okay, well, study this. And I would go and study it, and he'd be shocked what, what I came back with. You know, he'd be like, man, well, that's kind of a little bit over my head because, I mean, one time he was trying to get me to, you know, wanted me to pay my tithing, so I went back and I studied tithing in depth, and I found out, man, it's nothing what they taught it's not in the church. New Testament. Yeah, it's not even. It's completely different, and yeah. so um, he was he was shocked with that. But we still had a good relationship, you know, and yeah. uh, you know, and I it wasn't an argument. Maybe you planted some seeds. Yeah, possibly. So. <laughs> yeah. People, people really, it's just amazing what we don't know. Mm -hmm. That's one of the fun things I did when I came out was I went through all my missionary scriptures mm -hmm. and tried to identify how how they related really now as a Christian and a church. Have you done any of that checking? Uh, say, say that one more time. Sorry. Well, just some of the yeah. missionary scriptures that we use so much, like uh, oh, the okay. priesthood. Yes. What, the one I used all the time was Jesus says to the twelve, I guess, I have chosen you and ordained you. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, there's no Melchizedek priesthood words in that in that yes. comment. He, he certainly may have ordained them and chose them, but there's nothing about Melchizedek priest. Anyway, just every scripture I went to that I used as a missionary was just mm -hmm. taken out of context and just plucked out. And, yes, I, I found a lot of that, and yeah. um, once again, it's, it's it's kind of shocking. It's shocking what we're you know told to you know say and do and. Um, it's just uh, it's interesting, you know. It's uh, now that I I've taken myself out and I'm I'm becoming more open uh, yeah. with people, uh, because it, it's hard pill for my family to swallow. My brother, you know, he's a devout LDS, is great he, guy. And so you ask any questions, or are you able to share at all? I'm, I'm yeah, I, sh I, I attempted to share with him uh, a while ago, and I mean, he immediately goes he went into defense mode. But then, uh, but you're, you're also learning at, in this process how to approach people because it's it's yeah. you know when you're attacking their belief system, yeah. it's a. Uh, they're, they naturally want to defend themselves. Well, and you've mm. been through it too, and I have too. Yes. The initial response <laughs> yeah. is to defend. Yes. You can't believe that you could be unaware, I guess is the way to say it. All these years, for me, it was 65 years, for heaven's sake, you know, and uh, 
Yeah, for, you, for you, not quite as many. Yeah, thanks to you know, thanks to my dad and God. I mean, I I've been able to see the, you know, early on, and I'm so grateful for that. And you know, I, I feel bad for others that are uh, kind of uh, still caught in that. And I have so many friends calling me up. I don't know why I'm the I'm the, the friend that a lot of people like to turn to and open up their you know and tell yeah. me their their uh, I guess their their problems. But um, I have a lot of friends right now that are are leaving, but really? yet they're having a really hard time because of their family. Um, and they don't know what to do, and they're asking me for advice, and you know, and uh, the one thing you know it scares me the most. I just don't want them to, you know, just because they. Uh, once again, most people that have the, uh, come out of this for a brief minute uh, moment there, there's there's anger, this yeah. that anger of being lied to, and so I'm finding a lot of my friends are kind of in that situation where they don't want to be burned twice either. Exactly, you know? and so they think that it's all lies, you know, and yeah. that's and that's not the case, and um, I think that. Uh, you have to really go about this in a when you're coming become or opening up to people you got to yeah. do it in the right way and maybe learn and have some patience and I ask that's, questions that's key mm -hmm. well you've got a great attitude you're a new dad yes yeah. how's that working out oh man it's awesome having a, a little baby Riker um, <laughs> but he's uh, he's great uh, a lot yeah. of work I mean I didn't know how difficult it was going to be a, to be a dad especially this initial period where you get no sleep but it's yeah. he's about two months old and it's been wonderful. <laughs> well, I, I hope that doesn't cause problems in the future, and I hope that yeah. your wife is able to to look at things in an honest sort of a way maybe down the road. You've got just a minute or so. What would you say to your family, friends, and those that are watching? Um, I would just tell them to keep on, to keep on searching. Uh, to don't be afraid to Don't look. be afraid. And when somebody tells you uh, not to study yourself, out of the church or to don't read that because um, yeah. you know it's uh, it's not written by a Mormon um, you know have more faith in God and have more you know faith that uh, trust in yourself trust in yourself you too yeah. yeah and and so I, I would say that would be my advice to to people is just go out there and you know have faith in yourself that uh, you can find yeah. your, for yourself the truth and you don't have to be told yeah. So I had a lady write to me, and she'd been in the church 56 years, and she says, "Well, after 56 years, I should be able to read something." Yeah. That uh, you know. So I think she read Grant Palmer's book, uh, Insider's View of Mormon Origins, or something, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, she <laughs> learned the truth, and yeah. uh, you know. But that's what happens when you s just do a little study. And can't be afraid of the truth. Yeah. I mean, you really can't. I mean, if uh, the, if, the, if it is true you're going to be able there's going to be that's right. evidence and stuff behind it to back it up yeah. but uh, you know I like I said I through this whole process it's been um, shocking to me and eye-opening but I've learned yeah. so much well Dallin great. thanks so much yeah. for coming and sharing you've got a wonderful story and I hope I'm sure there's people out there that are going to be uh, uplifted by what you've said so thank you so much thanks. we'll see you wow.